Okay, so we're going to talk about neuro, and it, it's a lot to do with stroke and head injury and all that, um, but you have to really understand the brain box first, okay? So we're going to pretend that this is Bob's brain. Okay, this is Bob. And what is your brain made up of? What is this outside part? I know your head is not a square, but this is just for illustration. The dermis. Not even the, what, uh, what's the on the very outside. The skull. the skull, right? So the skull holds your brain in. Okay? Is that movable? Does it flex at all? No. no. It's pretty solid now that we're adults. Mm -hmm. Okay? Um, is there any way for fluid to get in or out of this hard box? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Where is that? It's your foramen magnum, you know, when you turn a skull upside down, it's got that big hole in the bottom. Mm -hmm. And that's why we've got these big veins, because that'll come into play. All right, so we've got this big hard box with just this little opening, okay? Mm -hmm. Then we have the brain. This is your brain in a brain box. Okay, what is the brain made up of? Neurons. Tissue. Neurons, okay. So this is tissue. It's very fragile. Um, it needs blood. Um, so then we also have, um, we have blood surrounding the brain here, right? And it gets there through which veins? The carotid veins. Okay. And then we have another fluid, CSF, which is, try to use a different color. Inside the brain here in these ventricles that kind of look like a butterfly, right? And then, and then you have a spinal cord. Okay? All of these things inside this box create pressure. You have to have enough pressure, number one, for the blood. You have to have a low enough pressure for the blood to go uphill and get into the brain, right? Mm -hmm. Your blood is coming from your heart and it's going uphill against gravity mm -hmm. into your brain, into this box full of pressure. Mm -hmm. So you agree if there's too much pressure, we're not gonna be able to, to push our way up, yeah. right? Okay, so that's one thing <clears throat> that we're working with. Your brain, whatever the size your brain is, is taking up space and creating pressure. So we have blood creating pressure, we have brain tissue creating pressure. If your cells swell, it makes your brain tissue bigger, creating more pressure, okay? So we'll put, if the cells swell, it increases the pressure. the um, pressure is too great, then you're not going to have any blood flow. Okay. So that's the blood and the brain tissue, and then we have the CSF. So if you, a CSF is a volume inside of your brain that's filling those hollow ventricles, mm -hmm. and it's creating pressure. Okay. Your brain needs to be bathed in blood that doesn't actually touch your brain. Remember that blood-brain barrier thing? It also needs to be bathed in CSF so that it will work. So all the electricity and everything is, you know, going the right direction and all that. <clears throat> so any, no, any one of these things that is too much increased volume, we're gonna have a problem, okay? So if our 
if we have too much blood volume or we have too much blood pressure, systolic pressure, then what things are affected? Because the blood can't go, there's nowhere for the blood to go, right? Because you have this hard skull. Mm -hmm. So if you have a, a very high blood pressure, like 200, and the blood is just pumping in there and taking up space, okay? Um, what kinds of things are we gonna see happen? What, what do you normally do, normal physiology? What does your brain do? If your blood pressure goes up, how does it compensate here? Get rid of CSF. You drain CSF, okay? We can't do anything about our brain tissue at this point. If you're a kid, your brain is right up against the skull. There is absolutely no give. If you're old and your brain has shrunken, mm -hmm. as it does, you have some room um, for that blood pressure, which just means you have a delay in symptoms. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> So if your blood pressure is okay, but your brain tissue is swollen, what's gonna happen? What would our body do? Scissors. Well, so your natural response, your, um, your brain, I don't know, you hit your head, your brain's a little bit inflamed. Mm -hmm. What can your body do to compensate? Drain CSF, mm -hmm. we can adjust the blood pressure, we can compensate with our blood pressure, mm -hmm. right? <clears throat> if we have um, too much CSF and we can't drain it for whatever reason, mm -hmm. again, okay. well, we're gonna have, our blood pressure will compensate, okay? Mm -hmm. So now we take the patient whose brain is injured. So they've had a stroke of any kind or they've had a head injury, okay? When your brain gets injured, bruised or damaged, it's gonna swell, right? We have an inflammatory response mm -hmm. and all of your platelets and fibrin and blood and all that stuff go to the area of injury and they go, okay, we're gonna fix it. So your brain swells. Well, normally we would drain some CSF, but our brain is injured and it's not going to be able to drain the CSF like it usually does. So now you potentially have a problem with too much CSF, okay? So you have brain tissue increasing pressure, you have CSF increasing pressure, and then potentially um, blood pressure. So as a nurse, we need to know how do we deal with this, right? So that's what this is all about, is knowing that you have to have a balance because you can't have everything increased inside of your head because your pressure will then be too high and your blood will not be able to get into your head. Mm -hmm. You also have to have a way for the blood to get out of your head mm -hmm. once it's gone up there. So you have to have good uh, venous return, mm -hmm. okay? So are there any questions about like the brain box thing? Okay, so worst case scenario, there's too much pressure and the patient can't compensate, and we're trying, but nothing is working, what's gonna happen to this patient? Worst case. Herniate. 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 Yeah. Because where is the brain gonna go? Yeah. It's gonna go down into, uh, through that foramen ovale, Ouch. and you now have herniated. And right when that happens, because we've had patients that we knew that was what was gonna happen, they were terminal, mm -hmm and their pressures were really high and we couldn't do anything for them, their blood pressure, their heart rate, everything goes sky high and then normal. And that's how you really know that they have herniated. And at that point, then they would be brain dead. Now, whether or not their body stays alive, that depends on the patient, depends on what treatment we're giving them, um, and then we talk about organ donation, okay? So that's how all of this works. So as as far as nursing goes, we have to think about how we're going to assess the patient, the um, complications based on whatever their injury is, and then the things that we can manipulate in the patient to fix them, okay? So we're gonna think about how do we manipulate the blood pressure? Drugs, right? We can raise it, we can lower it. Um, how do we manipulate CSF? 
you put a ventriculostomy in, you put a tube in the ventricles and then you can drain it out, okay? Um, if you have a hematoma, if you have a big blood clot in there, they can maybe do surgery and get rid of it because it's taking up space and causing pressure. Um, if the brain tissue is swollen and inflamed, so craniotomy to allow for a, a, um, pressure relief, but there are some medications you can give. Mm -hmm. get, good, mannitol. Question, why was my patient not on mannitol? That's a good question. Okay. Um, <laughs> mannitol is a cerebroselective osmotic yeah. diuretic. Yeah. It knows where the brain is <laughs> and it pulls the fluid out of it. So it's amazing. Um, so that's mannitol and then you can also give a steroid and we generally give uh, decadron or dexamethasone. Okay? So that's the brain box. For a craniotomy? Like for brain the craniotomy, yeah. So think about, we've got too much pressure here. If the doctor goes in and goes, I'm removing a piece of your bone, now the brain's not gonna go down here, it's gonna go out here. That's what, um, that's what pa the yeah, patient, patient that we took care of, yeah. So, this is a last ditch effort. If your patient is having their skull flap removed, mm -hmm. um, that means that there is literally nothing else they can do. They might survive, but they're not gonna be the same. Because think about it, your brain's gonna go out this hole and you're gonna scrape stuff yeah. going out, it's your bone, right? Oh, I didn't think of that. Yeah, well, and then brain. if your brain shrinks a little bit and goes back, um, it's you've damaged a bunch of these cells okay so um, I've seen people in the community that have had the bone flap removed and they've survived and they have the big scar and their mm -hmm. head is like sunken in mm -hmm. because they did not put their skull flap back or they didn't put in like a metal, a metal plate mm -hmm. okay because that's what we do to you know keep your head together keep your brain inside all that good stuff well, why would they put it back? I don't understand I don't know. I went into her patient's room and I had to question. I don't know if you got a chance to ask. 